Well, here we are booting into our Fedora 8 installation again. Same as last time, you get the little black, blank, and screwy, and here we come with our login utility. Click, then the password, and doesn't take many seconds after that, after the little blackout, for everything to boot up and give us our finished desktop. It's a fairly snappy booting Linux, and I do like that. One thing we ought to check out is some of the support offered. Fedora has amazing support. There's just all kinds of information you can get. Click on that Firefox icon, fire up our web browser, and you'll find that already preloaded in tabs at the top of the browser window. You have Fedora Project, Release Notes, Red Hat, stuff like that, documentation. All good information, all worth reading. Really, a half hour spent or an hour here can save you just all kinds of hassles. Learn a lot. Yeah, check out Red Hat. Their magazine's pretty good. The other stuff, well, hey, they sponsor, that is, pay for Fedora, really. So it's cool to give them their due. Infinite possibilities. Yeah, that's the Fedora 8, that Fedora project itself, its web page. And it has a lot of information you can get Fedora, you can join Fedora, you can help out. Remember, even if it's sponsored by Red Hat, it's co-op project, real open source, real free software. Now let's talk about adding and removing software. It takes the same utility for both. We're authenticating as root, of course, because anytime we alter the system, we have to do that. Good security measure. Retrieving software information both from our system to see what's on it already, and also from the download servers, the ones that remember we got the key from so that we know that we're getting software from the official safe source. Let's see here. We can search around that way, going through different kinds, but what I want here is Thunderbird. Evolution is a great email and package with a lot of good grouper functions, but I'm kind of a fuddy-duddy, and I've been using Thunderbird for a long time, and, well, I'm used to it. So I might as well use that as my test install as anything else. I click on it there and check it, or I can even check the package details. Hmm. Doesn't say much. Well, Fedora is for enthusiasts and developers who presumably already know this stuff. So they don't need the information. I just apply and continue. Resolves those dependencies and off it goes. All automatic, no help needed from us. Just sit here and listen to the music. Da -ba -da. Fast forward through. Because even though it's only one package and it doesn't take that long, hey, you know, after you've seen the blue bar move, you've seen it move and you don't need to see it over and over again, even for 30 seconds or a minute. Updating software. We'll do this in real time because it takes very little time at least for one package with few or no dependencies. And here we are. Thunderbird coming at us. Software installation successfully completed. Okay little slow to go away here. Yeah, I know, I know. I always click it the second time. It's totally unnecessary. But what about we want to go to YouTube and watch those flash videos? How about some macromedia software? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to find it here because just something to work with flash. Because you see, macromedia flash is not free software. So Fedora doesn't play that game. It also doesn't have anything really to help you with MP3s. You cannot play MP3s or other proprietary audio formats in Fedora native either. Enthusiasts and developers do not need to do this. However, there are ways to get those proprietary codecs through unofficial sources. Check the Linux.com article text that accompanies this video and we'll point you to some of them. Now let's delete some software. Same thing. 
authenticate as root, retrieve software information. Remember, this is an add slash remove utility, so it could be either way. Well, let's take Thunderbird out. We put it in. Let's see what it's like coming out. We search for it because we know what it is. We see that it's checked. That tells us it's installed. If we uncheck it, it uninstalls it. Apply and continue. Resolves dependencies. If there's any packages that were only installed for Thunderbird and not being used by other software, they too will be deleted. As it is, I don't think there are any, so there's no additional deletion. Naturally, any dependent on software that's being used by other applications will not be removed. In this case, software removal successfully completed, just like we figured it would be. OK. And there we go. We can blow that down. I guess what I might as well do now, since really our work here is done, and you've seen enough that it's time for you to try Fedora 8 for yourself, if you feel it's a distribution that is of interest to you, which it very well may be. It's smooth, it's mature, and it works well. But while you do that, I'm going to look at one of my favorite websites, which is, of course, Linux.com.